Hello, I'm Carol Erger Fass, exhibit curator here at the library, and I want to welcome you to tonight's artist talk with award winning sculptor Lucy Caprenier and Migs Burroughs. Lucy's fabulous exhibit, Zen Meditations, and our two other exhibits kicking off 2020, 2024, um, have a look towards the skies and beyond. With her organic assemblages made out of found objects like wood and stone and metal and bone, she aims to create harmony among very diverse elements. Lucy's in tune with nature and the environment, and she looks to give new life to old and discarded things. She uses a lot of recycled material in her work. So what most people would consider flotsam and jetsam, she sees as treasures. Her creations are inspired by nature, music, and the world around her. Searching for beauty in the world, Lucy strives to create works of peace and tranquility in a world that often feels just the opposite. Lucy's exhibited extensively in galleries and museums in New York City and around the Northeast, and uh, solo exhibitions at the Hammond Museum, the Stanford Museum, and the Silver Mine Arts Center, among others. She's exhibited in countless group shows. Um, she's been a curator of major exhibits and museums, and she's been featured on uh, Channel 12 News in several newspapers, books, and magazines. Also, her sculptures have been featured on album covers, and her pieces can be found in private collections throughout the United States and Europe. Thanks to everyone who helps make these evenings possible, our dedicated art committee, Travis Bell, our audio engineer, and David Bibby, our video producer. A recording of tonight's talk will be available on the website soon. And because it is being recorded um, after when there's questions and answers, if you can use the microphone over there by the um, backdrop, uh, that way everybody will be able to hear the questions. I also want to thank the Drew Friedman Foundation for their continuing support of library art programs all year round. And now I'll turn this over to Migs with a special thanks for all the time and prep he puts into making these talks look so easy. <laughs> thank you, Carol. And thank you all. And Lucy, congratulations. This is, I think, one of the biggest, if not the biggest crowd ever. So, um, thank, you. Um, thank you all for coming. Yeah, it really, really. Means a lot. it's great thank you. to support your friends in the arts. Um, I'm actually going to start with a trivia question that you weren't prepared for, but it should be easy. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, in 1999, that's 25 years ago, there was an epic, <laughs> groundbreaking transformational event in the art world that you were part of. Do you remember what that was? Oh dear. Could that have been a certain TV show? Oh, wait a minute. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can someone take a picture of that, please? That's, oh my God. So 25 years ago, so. Look, wait, wait, look how young we were. <laughs> you were. I, you know. Wow. <laughs> and you have your sneakers on. <laughs> so all I, what I do remember is, I don't know if you can make out, it's a little, you know, in those days, video was so, the quality was so poor. But um, Roger, was it Roger Mudry from the Silver Mine? Never stopped talking about your boots for like five years after this. These are, these are different <laughs> boots. These are not the same ones. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Are These are different boots, not the same ones. But appropriate. <laughs> but appropriate. Yeah, yes, apparently. So, well, let's start. Uh, I guess the obvious thing is to, you I, know. I'd like, to, I'd like yeah. to state also that apparently Martha Stewart was big on this show, so I feel very honored. Oh, thank you, yes. Um, so, started, I don't know if this is the beginning, but maybe this is an entree into you know, how you got started and why you got started? It's, it's not one of my earlier pieces, but it's from quite a while ago. And my dad was a violinist, and that was one of his old violin cases. And I've done, since then, I've done a whole series of pieces in violin cases. And it's funny, I'd gone to visit my parents, and 
they were getting rid of some of the old cases and my, I was like, I want those, I want those. And they said, oh, do you want them like for the little hooks and stuff? And I was like, no, I want the cases. And that was the first piece that I ever did using a violin case. And it's actually inspired by so many different things, but part of it is a jazz album that a friend of mine did. And was really exciting. It was in a show in a museum, and there was a picture of it in the New York Times, and I didn't know when I opened up my New York Times, and I probably screamed in the kitchen. <laughs> like, so. Now, wasn't your father, he was in the movie Arthur, wasn't he? Yes, he was. With Dudley he, Moore? He was the gypsy violinist. I should move this here. That would be better. He was the gypsy violinist who serenaded Liza Minnelli and Dudley Moore when they have their first intimate dinner. So, yes. So, yeah. kind of. And he was in a bunch of other movies, but that's the one you probably remember most. So, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's unusual, but a lot of artists I interview would ask about their parents and creativity, and you know, their parents were accountants or teachers, and both your parents were very creative, right? Your, your mom was? Yeah, I really lucked out. Um, my mom was an artist, my dad was the violinist, and that's the world I grew up in, going to galleries and museums and concerts my whole life. So it was kind of just sort of natural to me. Like people, I have friends who say, I can't take my kids to go to a museum or a concert. I'm like, why not? If you take them and you love it, they'll love it. Like, it's just how you bring them up. But, um, yeah. So I, so I want to ask about the quote, you know, about people thinking, you know, flotsam, jetsam, garbage, and how you... So on behalf of people that, and myself, wh where is the beauty in, all, in stuff like that? I mean, wh what is the beauty in a rusted piece of metal and a, and a, and a fossilized bone and... For you, I mean, what do you, what, it, what, what does it, what you know, appeals to you? That's a really interesting question, and it's kind of hard to answer, but it's something that I just see. Like, I see a piece of metal, I see a stone, I see a piece of wood, flotsam, jetsam, whatever, and it just, it speaks to me. And I always know when I see a piece if I can use it or not. Like, uh, if I'm walking along, I'm not going to carry, take away the whole beach or the whole park or whatever. <laughs> but pieces speak to me, and I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do with them. Or, originally, but they... Do they really kind of, in your mind, say, take me home, take they, me they home? They literally yeah. do, yeah. There have been cases where um, I was visiting a friend once years ago, and they were doing excavation in his neighborhood, and there was this amazing stone that was this really heavy that was in the excavation. And I was like, oh my God, I have to have that. And he looks, he goes, okay. I said, well, let's go get it. And he goes, well, it's really heavy, and we can't get it now because it's daylight out. And I was like... No, why? we need to take it now. He's like, Lucy, I promise you, I promise you, I will go back and I will get it for you. And I was like, I'm not leaving here until I get that stone. And it's huge. It weighs a ton. And I still have, I didn't make a sculpture out of it. It's just kind of, it just had so much power in it. Just like really earthy, amazing thing that I just needed. So yeah, they do speak to me. And we're, you know, many of the titles suggest spirituality, I mean, more than suggest, you know, they <clears throat> define a spirituality that comes sanctuary, altars, Zen, and does that come from your family or where did that side of you, where that spiritual side come from, do you think? I th in, in, in some ways it comes from my family. My parents, my parents were really free thinkers, so I was raised in a non-typical environment and I've always just been attracted to Zen and peace and beauty. So yeah, those are, it's just, and, and a part of it is just my soul. It's who I am. I don't like loud stuff. I, I'm just drawn to peace and beauty. And so it's sort of just a natural part of me. This one, okay, so when I, to lead into this one, I guess I have to explain where it all comes from, is that? Yeah. Okay, so as a kid, we spent a lot of our summers on the beaches of Cape Cod, and I was always collecting flotsam and jetsam. <laughs> and years later, my mom called and she said, do you want this stuff that's in the attic? Because if not, I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, keep it, keep it. And I, so then I went to visit them. And I took home, and it was all kinds of stuff. Up, up on the, we used to stay on the bay side in Provincetown, actually. And when the tides would go out, you could walk for what seemed like miles. And there was just, oh, there were bones and stones and rusted metal and driftwood and all kinds of cool stuff. So I took this stuff home, and I just started kind of playing around with it. And I started making jewelry, of which this, I don't know if anyone can see this, but this is one of my early pieces. And 
everyone started saying, wow, those are like mini sculptures. You need to work larger, you need to work larger. And eventually I had dinner in the city one night with my friend Mike Brenson, who at the time was one of the New York Times art critics who I knew from when I was living in Paris. And he was like, Lucy, these are mini sculptures. You have to work larger. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I was on a trip upstate and I just by chance found Opus 40, which is one of the most extraordinary magical places out there. It's a place that Harvey Fight built over 40 years. It's all stone and it's these stone formations and there's sculptures and it's just amazing. But on my way there or back, I found an abandoned stone quarry and I was like, oh, okay, so I can get larger forms of the little guys that I was making stuff for. And so I, I filled my car with stuff and brought it back home. And the kind of the funny thing is that years and years later, this was up in Woodstock, Saugerties in Woodstock, which I'd been going to Woodstock my whole life because my grandmother had a gallery up there when I was a little kid. Um, so years later, friends of mine who lived up there were like, you do know that there are rattlers in there. <laughs> and I was like, uh, no. Which is kind of funny, because if I'd ever, they were like, you know, they're dangerous. I'm like, they wouldn't have to bite me. I would have just died of a heart attack if I saw a rattler while I was climbing through the quarries. But luckily, I never did. So then I came home, and then I didn't know what I was going to do. I obviously, I had learned how to drill little pieces of stone, but I didn't know how to do big stuff. So I literally, I went to hardware stores. I talked to guys on construction sites. I, like anyone I could talk to who could help me, and the piece before this, the one that has the, that's dangling. Can you just go back to go the, back. that one? That's called dangling participles, which is also a play on, yeah, play on words and also, but that was part of my experimentation in learning how to drill stone. And you need different, you need different drill bits. I use different bits for every different, for wood, metal, stone. And it's not easy because you never know if the stone is going to break. So it's kind of a hit and yeah. miss. Now I remember and I visited your studio for the 25-year-ago interview. Um, yeah, it was like, you know, it was just this incredible wood. Grill presses and clamps and vices. And I mean, it was a really, and you had goggles and a hard hat. Or something. I mean, it was, you really, I mean, it's hard work. It's not just yeah. delicate oh, yeah, yeah, assembly. Yeah, totally. There's a lot of. And it's dangerous. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. So the other, I don't know if we get one with. Bones in it. Okay, that has a little bone in it. And, and oh, okay. Yeah. This is one. That's actually the one I wanted. Would you use the pointer for one second? Or you, you have you have the oh, pointer I have, thing. Oh, I have my yeah, own pointer. The top, little red. For the top button. thing. Okay. So this was a piece that I did relatively early on, and the piece in the back, the wood is actually a slat. <clears throat> excuse me. From a friend's boat. Um, from a boat that friends of mine had in their barn in Maine. And so they gave me that, and then I started putting the other elements together. The piece is called Harmony, and what I love about it is just the fact that there are, there's stone and metal and wood in the center. Let me see if I can do this. Yeah, it doesn't work so well on this digital screen for some reason. I mean, it, is it even working? If you start on the black, it, I have I, one What too. am I supposed to push? I don't, no, I you're pushing, I think, yeah, you're. I don't say anything. Uh, okay. You just point to it, okay. <laughs> In the center, yes. So the piece coming down is wood. The piece going off that way is stone, and the piece behind it is metal. And I just okay. thought that it was. Let me get back to the microphone. <laughs> I just thought that it was really extraordinary that three such diverse pieces of elements could merge, and you really don't know where one starts and one begins because the piece is, is not that big. So you really, in looking at the piece, you wouldn't you but wouldn't know which is why it's called Harmony. And, and the composition, you know, anyway, you're, you're so masterful at, at all out of this, but I won't ruin the punchline, but I'll ask what many people ask. Where do you get the bones? They're my old boyfriends buried in the backyard. <laughs> 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 don't tell the police. I don't want them digging in my backyard. <laughs> Actually, well, some of those and no. 
there, it, you know, it's stuff I've just been collecting any time I'm, whether I'm at, by a river or in the woods or where, there's just, there are bones everywhere. And once I started collecting them, friends of mine would say, oh, you know, I have a collection of bones. Do you want them? Like, yeah, absolutely. So most of them I don't even necessarily find anymore. People are just are giving them to me. I mean, my question would be, great. why do you have a collection of bones? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm strange. Uh, you know what? It's funny. There's such like a contradiction of the people who think that bones are so cool and people are like, oh my God, that's disgusting. How do you touch them? And to me, they're just really fascinating. I think they're like little works of art in themselves. If you look at most bones, they're just absolutely gorgeous. So do you have to do, I mean, are some what I don't want to get too you can be good, so. gross, but did you have to boil them or clean them or I mean, some, they come yeah, natural some, like I that. do generally boil them, yeah, okay. but a lot of them are, are so old that then I don't have to. Okay. And it's funny because every so often someone like Silvermine called me one day and they said, someone just called us up and they said, there's a deer carcass on their, on their property and would, would you know an artist who would like it? And everyone was like, Lucy. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so I go over with a friend well, it was a deer carcass. And I'm like, I am not touching that. Like, I, if it's <laughs> anywhere, anything on it, whether it's skin or hair or meat, like, what, uh, no. I only like them when they're nice and clean. And so, to be, yeah. Now this is one of, I don't know, I oh. think one of your more figurative cases. Yes, I, I don't yeah. do much that's figurative, yeah. but I do have a few that are. And this one is called Alien, because that's my little alien. And if you look at it, <clears throat> can anyone tell? Can you tell what the top piece, it, the, the top back? The head, you mean? The center of the head and the other. Does anyone figure that out? The top behind the head, you mean? Y yeah. What's behind the head? What's behind the head and, and, and the head. Is it a cheese grater, maybe? Is it a steamer? Yeah, it's... What? It's actually a, um, what do you call those things now? An espresso machine. And someone, oh. someone gave it to me, not in that direction. They gave it, like, face up. with the, and They said, I don't know, maybe you can use this. And I was like... Oh, look, here's an alien. So I do, I do like occasion. Most of my stuff is serious and serene and, you know, zen. But I do like having fun and doing stuff that's, so, so that's a fun piece. So just a little glimpse at the process. So you start, that, that inspires the idea of the alien head. And then what prompts you to say, oh, this needs a, a, a piece of wood, this needs a, a molten, it looks like old solder or something. I mean, where does that, what? I don't know. <laughs> okay, no. it's just intuitive. Right? It, it's kind of, yeah, it really is intuitive. Like, I know that it needs a body, and then I find, I probably found, that's a, probably a smashed can of something, mm. aerosol can, I think, and... I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. The pieces just kind of come together. I, I, sometimes I don't really even take responsibility for them. I feel as if when I'm in my studio, it's almost as if I'm channeling. Not that I know of channeling, but it's that's what it would feel like. Like ideas just come, and it, they just the sculptures kind of just sort of create themselves. Yeah, when you say channeling, it's interesting because you're one of the few artists I know that you really. It's not derivative. I can't think of another artist that. It even remotely looks like this, or do, you know. Well, and it's interesting that you say that because I, whenever anyone says to me, "Oh, I saw some work that made me think of yours. You should go see it." I don't. I will not go see it. <laughs> I just. I don't want to be influenced. I. Mm. I want it to just be. It, yeah. To just be mine. And this piece actually was in a show. This was such an honor. I don't know if most of you know, did you know Nyad and Walt Einsel? They were two Westport huge luminaries, amazing. And that was in a, that was in a show that I had at the, the um, Cannondale Gallery years ago. And they came, I didn't know them. They ended up becoming very dear friends after that. But they came to the show. If any of you did know them, you know that their house was an absolute museum, like just of all their work, because they were both extraordinary artists. And they told me they bought this piece, and they said it was the first piece that they had ever bought. That, and it was like, you couldn't have, that was like such a huge honor. So, and then Walt died, and then when Nyad died, the family actually gave it back to me, mm. which is like so, so touching, yeah, yeah, so. Oh, wait, that's, okay. that. yeah, that's, that's the one. That one is actually small. It's probably about like so. 
Yeah, this is a mixture of, this is why on my website I actually have pictures of me with sculptures, because otherwise you have no idea. They, I mean, it says how big they are, but it wouldn't. This one is called Meditation, and I live on a river, and, well, I'm not on the river, along a river, and that's representative of the meditation spot that I have along the river, and the little stone in the center, the tight little thing, that's me, and then that little piece of bone is my meditation spot, and then hmm. the metal there is the river, and then the wood is the next, like, the world, and then the stone is kind of the universe, so that's kind of the idea of me and my... I mean, and coloration my... is so amazing. I mean, you don't do anything to the stone. That's found... It's just beautiful, I mean... Well, you know, people always say... It is oh, like a galaxy, kind of. It, yeah, it. well, people always say, oh, stone, it's gray, it's brown. I'm like, no, it's in every hue of the rainbow. So, yeah, it's, it's, stone is amazing. But interesting, but not asked about scale, but... In that your, one's relatively small. But also. in your, dr your dr dream world of the ultimate, do you imagine, like, how big a piece could you conceive of doing, and where would it be, like... Right here. Yeah. Up here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I would need little elves to help me make that one. <laughs> but I mean, do you think you could, there's no limit really there's, to the size. No. You, you're not gonna find a bone, well, unless a dinosaur bone, you're not gonna find a, a six foot. Right, right. Femur somewhere. Right, but. and my studio is definitely not big yeah, enough okay. for dinosaur bones, but right. although if you find them, oh, we know I'll where take to go. them. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Zen Temple and I don't know, it just felt like a temple. And it just, I'm, to me, my sanctuary is kind of the, the whole Zen thing. So the nature are you, and... Are you, do you practice Buddhism or do you just I don't, study it? Or? I mean, I think in my, my way of life, yes, I'm not an active Buddhist mm. or anything, but it, it's something that, I, that I'm very in tune with and it's just how I see the world and how I, kind of retreat to that place because I feel as if we live in a really difficult world and that's my solace. Mm. Okay, this one is called Reflections. And this one was actually done at a period of time that was a particularly violent period of time in the world. And I was trying to find, I couldn't, I think this might have been, I think this was actually right after 9-11. I did a series of these, so there's there are several of them. but. And I just couldn't understand why there's so much hatred out there and why people, like, why does it matter what your skin color is, what your religion is, what your, you know, it, any of that, your sexuality, like, who cares? So I was trying to create a piece that showed reflections of light, of light and dark and how they beautifully reflect each other and finding the positive in that as opposed to the negative that so many people in the world find. Yeah, and they're coexisting. They're not clashing, I mean, they're harmonious. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, that kind of brings up a little... And, and they all kind of look like, I just, I made them what? to me, I'm into sort of what looks like messages, ancient, primitive, um, ancient, yeah. primitive messages. So that's kind of what it looks like What is like that little me. squiggly part on the left in the middle? I'm just curious. I, I, I don't know. Does don't anybody know? know? I know what a lot of the metal I use is, is, but there's are some things I just, I have no idea, and I would love to know. This is from um, another, the series of Reflections, and this one is called Reflections from Provence, and that is actually, the piece there is a little window from the barn of my best friend's um, barn when they lived in Provence, and I just thought it was really cool, so I, they said, oh, it had fallen out of the thing, and so they gave it to me. And I brought it home, but which is actually part of another funny story, because then I filled up my carry-on bag with rocks, and I got and I got on literally got on the plane, and the steward is like, "Oh, let me let me help you put that in the overhead." And I was like, "No, no, no, you really don't want to help me." He goes, "No, no, no, you're little. You, I need to help you." I was like, "No, really, you don't." So he takes it from my and he puts and he's like, "What do you have rocks in here?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> so that's that's me. But this is called, so that's why this is Reflections from Provence. So it's just another kind of reflect from a reflection series. Yeah, it's always amazing things 
context is everything. You're driving down the Merritt Parkway, you see a rusted piece of metal on the road. It's like, I hope somebody picks that up so I don't get a flat tire, but... And you know. I'm jumping out of my car. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. This one is called Message. And I have a series of, of message ones. Again, it looks kind of like primitive writing or something. And they I look like, say. I mean, they do look something like an alien. They would find that an alien left <laughs> us. No, I mean, an what alien. What are you saying about me? <laughs> not, not you being an alien, but no, they have this mis mystical, cryptic, there's like yeah. a code. It's like you want to decode them. Like right, not, right, right. So what, does, so what does it say? Yeah, know. well, that's up to the viewer. What does it say? Yeah. yeah. Um, now, this one is also, this was called Zen Message. So again, it was in that series. And does anybody recognize what the big round thing is? Go back, back, back in your heads in time. A what? No, no the big, the round. The round the, disc? The big piece. Uh, that. I heard it. What? That is one of the original flying saucers that we used to use, you know, to go sledding. Oh, really? And, oh, my. And I found that somewhere, and it already had that amazing patina. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, is, a, like... this, is, this is a big piece. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, my God, that looks like, you know. And I actually had to, the back of it had this from the olden days before they were made of plastic when they were actually made of metal. And I had to cut the straps off the back of it and... And then I just added stuff to it, and it became one of my pieces. And that middle piece looks like a wrench. Yeah, some that's some hex, kind of a wrench. Hex and wrench, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Now, is this a flying saucer, too, but it's colorful? No, this is the top of an old drum barrel. And <laughs> this is actually, this is a really special piece to me because this was a commission, and some people I knew, well, I didn't really know them. They were friends of friends came to one of my shows and just fell in love with my work. And so then the wife said, we would really like to commission you. They have a phenomenal, amazing house in Weston that has, as if the house wasn't beautiful enough, they put in an octagonal room that's attached to it that's surrounded by woods. It's just beautiful and a huge stone fireplace. And they said, we'd really like a piece for over the fireplace. And I said, okay, that's fabulous. I said, you know, go to my website. And they said, no, no, we want to commission you. I said, oh, okay, well, why don't you go to your web, my website and give me an idea of what you would like. And they said, no, we want you to just create it for it. We trust you. Which was such a vote of confidence and really kind of scary because it's like, ah. So I went and visited and that's, that's the piece that came out of it. And it just, again, it just kind of created itself. That one is called Shelter, and I was given, that's an old furnace door, and I don't know, it just, with the little nooks in it, I have just sort of felt as if it was, it looked like shelter, so. And the, and the back is a roofing slate. I use a lot of old roofing slates. Now, is this driftwood you find on the river, or are you walking through the woods, and then you cut up a piece, or you find it? I, I usually just use it as I find it. Yeah. It's pretty rare that I cut it, because if you cut it, you actually have an end that's finished right. as opposed to the rest. But it's stuff that I find, yeah, in rivers, oceans, woods, you name it. People send me stuff from California, from the beaches out there. <laughs> This is another one of my meditation ones. This is, um, and to me it just, the back is, I'm not totally sure. I, I think it might be part of a catalytic converter heat shield or something, but I'm not really sure exactly what the metal piece is. And then, I don't know, it just seemed like a little person meditating. It just, <laughs> it was the feel of it. So I have a kind of a weird question. So I think most artists, you know, what you see of their work might be, anywhere from 10% to 50% of what they actually produce because there's things artists do that they don't like or they're off in a direction they're not happy with and they put it aside. Do you have either work that you've done or contemplated 
that's sort of too dark for your... Have you ever gone, you know, had kind of, let's say, less spiritual, you're angry, you're whatever, and done, have you produced anything that we haven't seen that you wouldn't want us to see? Maybe that's what I'm getting at. I don't know what I'm getting at. Interest, interesting question. <laughs> um, anything hidden in the... Hidden in the basement. In the basement that nobody you know, will ever see. I'm, I'm not one of those angry artists. A lot of artists, they create when they're depressed or they're angry or whatever. I'm, that's just so not me. I, I create when I'm in a good place, and so it's usually good coming out of stuff. There are pieces that I've made that I just never really liked. Hmm. But, you know, but then again, even that is so subjective because sometimes... There was a solo show that I had years back, and I was, I was just working, 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 and creating so much new work for it. And there was one piece that I almost didn't put in the show, and then I was told, no, no, put that one in the show. And of course, that one sold on the opening night <laughs> yeah. along with others, and I was like, oh. And I almost didn't put it in, because I didn't think it was good enough, so. Now this has, I don't know what that is, but this has a very oriental, Asian feel to it. I mean, yes. Yeah. This one is called Zen Symmetry. This is in the show. Oh. And this one, the piece, the wooden piece in the center someone gave me, and I just thought, oh my God, it's an amazing piece. I think it's part of a table or something like that. I don't, I don't really know. Bed. It's what? A bed. From a bed. From a bed? Yeah. Is it? What piece of a Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, do you have any left? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just break it down and uh, I, yeah, it was given to me and I just thought it looked I thought it looked Asian and it made for a perfect the piece is called Zen Symmetry and it to me it looks like some kind of an yeah. Asian you know, s mystical piece. But yeah. Oh, and here's you with a yeah. Oh, goodness. Show? Look, look Do you know what show it like was? That. Hmm? Okay, so that one is called Tribal, Mes Tribal Message. So that's another one of the... And actually, the, the wooden piece there, which was driftwood, belonged to parents of a good friend of mine. And I think they were, oh, they were selling their house and moving, and they just said, we think you might want this. So that's part of that series. And then the one in the center is Sanctuary. And it's a huge old furnace door. And the cool metal piece that goes like that is actually, um, oh god, I just spaced. It's a, it's a shock absorber from an ancient carriage that, again, someone gave me. And then an old bone. And those are really old bones. And to me, it, looked, it just felt like a sanctuary. So, oh, and that one, oh, this one, yes. This one. This one's called O Totem, built on auto and totem, which I created that term a long time ago. I've done a series of O Totem pieces, and they're all, like, the, all that stuff are catalytic converter heat shields and parts from cars. And no, I don't steal people's catalytic converters. <laughs> I only take the rusty ones when they fall off of cars. But I just think they're fascinating, and they make really interesting totem pieces. Okay, we may have to speed through a few so we can leave time for questions, but... Okay, um... okay this one is called No Crackers, Please. <laughs> and I, occasionally I do whimsical pieces, and this was one of them. It just kind of looked like a bird, so I had to give it a fun title. But the cool thing about this one, which leads into the next slide, is that this was the cover of, a, of an album, an album cover. Oh, yeah. So, and, that, and they used actually four of my sculptures for it, so those are... There's the CD, and then mm. there's one, and there's... So that was... So it's just kind of a cool... Yeah, it's perfect for the CD with the... With the with your I, I know. Wasn't it amazing how it... Just because it was round, they... Yeah. And then there's another... And then this was another album. I'm saying album cover. It's really the cover, the back, the inside, the, the, the whatever, the whole thing. And again, they used a whole bunch of my sculptures for this one. And that one is Fork in the Road, which is out there. This one, well, the, the bone in the center, that is actually a whale vertebrae that was given to me, which is I thought was so cool to have a whale vertebrae. And then the shovel, that's a clamming shovel. And I was visiting friends. And they were having a party, and that was sitting on their deck. And I went, oh, 
oh, I like that. <laughs> and my friend Michael said, yeah, we like it too. <laughs> and I must have gone, like, you know. And he said, okay, if you promise to make a really good sculpture, I was like, I promise. So that was how that one was Did they created. buy it? Did you have to give they, it to them? No, I did not. No, no they just let me have it oh, and they, nice. yeah, no. Yeah, the, the thing behind the bars of the shovel. Right, and the shovel is so cool. Yeah. No, it just elevates these common objects. To, this one is called Goddess Altar. So it was, I was just trying to create another altar and with just various things that have, I've found over time. And this was actually really cool. I was in the process of preparing for the show that I think a lot of you probably came to, which was the one at the Hammond Museum last year, which was the artistic legacies, the Krupenya family that honored my grandmother, my mom, and me. And I was, a part of it was we each had a so we each had a show there, but then I also curated a group show called Zen Sanctuary. So I was finding artists whose work was appropriate. And I went to visit one of the artists who worked with Asian Bittersweet, which is the bottom stuff. And I had this piece almost finished, except for the bottom piece. That was the only part of it that wasn't finished. And I was looking at her stuff and I was like, by any chance, do you have any of this stuff lying around? She goes, oh, yeah. She, so it was just like so amazing that the timing it was just perfect. Like I needed the right piece for it. And it was almost as if it was a collaboration with her. And she's a phenomenal artist. So, But you don't visualize, you don't wake up with a total visualization of a piece and say, oh, I need a bone, I need a rusted shovel, I need this, I need that. <laughs> check, 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 check. No, I mean, you don't, no. you don't have those kind of dream no. concepts, right? No, and, and actually it's interesting. First of all, I'm also not a studied artist. I studied music, I studied French literature, I'm, I never studied art. So this is all very much from here. And what was the question? <laughs> oh, that you don't you don't oh, right, dream right, right. fully formed right, pieces right, of art, right. and then you get up and execute them. Yeah, right. no, and I don't draw my sculptures either right. before right. them. The only sculptures I ever draw, I've never created any one of them. I've <laughs> I've drawn some that I thought were pretty cool, uh, but I've never yeah I've never I've never made well. those. I don't yeah I don't. Needs the I should, but. And this one is the memorial piece to my dad. So this is again one of his old violin cases and. All of the elements in it are pieces that made me think of my dad and my mom. And I was very fortunate. My parents had the most extraordinary relationship. So it was just really loving. And things, it's like I have different things of like my dad protecting my mom and just their love. And they liked having champagne parties. So <laughs> there's what ancient things that look like, you know, <laughs> bottle openers that are not necessarily, but they looked like it and things from trips that they had taken, some stones that they had brought back and given me, and it just became my memorial for him. Mm. Sweet. I think that's the last yeah, one. I think that's the last, last one, one. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful way to end. So if anyone has any questions, you do have to stand over there so they can record you. You can just go up to the, the backdrop there on the microphone. And I think uh -oh. somebody's headed that way. And you know her. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy. Yes, Margie. Mon ange. Oh, merci. <laughs> so I've seen many of your sculptures, and I'm looking at the images here, and always have noticed wire wrappings. And I have a kind of a three-part question. It could have been four, but um, number one, when you find a piece of metal or someone gives it to you and it's very rusty, so I'm just going to ask all three, uh, do you ask ever... One at, ask one at a time because I might not remember that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, all right. That's... So first one then, um, <laughs> do you ever sand the rust to smooth it off or do you leave it as is? Occasionally I will like brush off or clean it off just so that stuff doesn't, because otherwise it can, you know, stuff falls all over and it can be messy. If it's too rusted, I can't use it. It just, it just won't work because it would make, it's, no one wants that hanging on their, you know, on their wall, dripping down onto their floor. <laughs> 
But occasionally, if I can tell that the rust, that the rust enough of it will come off, I mean, most of the stuff is fine. I don't have to do anything to it. I don't have to treat it. I don't. Hmm. So next, um, have you mastered the art of soldering? Do you solder these metal pieces together? I don't. I have a big, um, I have a, uh, a well, I have a whole welder at home, but I really don't use it because most of the stuff I'm using, it's different elements. And there are a few pieces that are all metal that I could have welded, but I tend to use different elements so that and you can only met, weld metal to metal. And it, well. That's a perfect lead into my next question. And my next question is, do you glue any of the pieces together? Early, early on, I used to glue stuff before I knew all my different method, methods of, I mean, it was just trial and error, learning how to drill stone, learning how to drill metal, learning how to drill wood, different drill bits, different lots of time spent at the hardware store talking to people. Then, and l certain little elements, yeah, I, I did glue. I don't, I pretty much don't anymore because now I've mastered the technique of really drilling and then wiring stuff and bolting stuff. So the new stuff, it's pretty rare that I ever, that I ever do. Okay, beautiful. Thank Very you. informative. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Merci you. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Margie. Anybody else? Oh, here comes. <gasps> Lucy, nice to see you again. Um, I have a question for you. When you were assembling and positioning all these things, do you ever lay the piece aside before you commit? And then you could come back a week later and say, oh my God, I put this here and Excellent, qu yeah. excellent question. Yes, I tend to have, especially in the past, not as much anymore, but I used to have numerous sculptures ongoing in my studio. And there'd be some here, some here, oops, oops, some, like all over the place. And I would work, like I'd concentrate on one, and then suddenly I would be using a piece of something and go, oh my God, that is exactly the piece that goes with that sculpture over there. So they, they yeah, they sort of complement each other. But yeah, I tend to have different things going. Same. Now often I'll just work on one at a time and be more specific. But yeah, I frequently have. And there are things that honestly, I could start something and then it could sit there for a week, a month, a year, a couple years. And then suddenly it's like, oh, now I, now, now I see what I'm supposed to do with this. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. You make some good decisions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Oh, since no one else is coming up, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. It really means so much to me. I really appreciate it. And I just, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, the library. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, my God, wait. Thank you to Migs. Thank you to Carol. Oh, my God, Carol is amazing. She's the one who put this all together and has had... And had has an incredible vision. Thank you to the entire library, everyone here for making this possible. It's so incredibly appreciated, all of it. Mm -hmm. Okay.